being together is the most important thing. An hour ago, I stopped making silk flowers and was waiting for you in the door when German troops came to the Schlumberg apartment over there. They were both people. What did you say? The soldiers went inside and brought out Rabbi Schlumberg, pulling him by the arms, by the beard. Then they knocked on this yarmulke in the middle of the street and they marched away. Listen. Now we only unlock and open the door for ourselves. Anyone else, I don't care who it is, your mother, my father, our sisters. If it's freezing outside or pouring down snow, please do me the favor and don't open the door. You promise. Of course. Paul, did you see Mrs. Schlumberg? Mrs. Schlumberg, such a dignified person. She stumbled out the door and down the steps, screaming at the Germans, punching at the Germans, begging them not to take her husband. You would have seen this if you would have turned that corner if you hadn't been late. I guess I'm indebted to Mrs. Bison for sparing you the sight. It's quite a lot of money she gave me, including the deposit for the new gown. At least someone no. is paying me, Paul. That is not a criticism. I thank you. This helps a great deal. And there's another dress she wants. If the lady you ordered it doesn't come back. So many dresses and gowns and coats I've made to order for so many women. I think of their sizes, their favorite fabrics, and their feet. Most don't come back for anything. We should be grateful to Mrs. Bison for buying my work because everyone knows she can choose very hard to see. You're an excellent designer. You're the best seamstress in prom. I don't mean to upset you. I'm sorry. I don't mean to upset you, Arthur. I'm sorry. But I can correct you. I am only amongst the best, Mr. Sorlad. This is no time for false modesty. I've written my cousin the truth. And what is that? That in Prague we have sophisticated women who demand dresses like they have in Paris. And they all come to you. What else have you written to our office? Bring us some bread and cheese, and I'll read you the letter. And hey, I immediately started writing when I saw what happened outside. We're not safe anymore. Is it hard writing a letter in English, Paul? Not when your letter depends upon it. December 11th, 1939. Dear Alvin, I received your uh, last letter and thank you very much for your kind care. I'm very glad to hear that you're troubling to get an affidavit of necessity for my wife as a dress designer. We would be kind to hear what success you've had in this time. An affidavit of necessity? Yes. Now I am nervous. With everyone trying to get into North America, we must stand out. For me, as a man, I don't take any kind of work, but you're an artist. I'm a dressmaker. You have a gift that has value. So how do I find the exact words to convince the American authorities to let us in? You just will. Keep reading. You may imagine that we have a great interest of leaving Europe as soon as possible because there is no possibility of getting a position in this country. By separate mail, I have sent you some dress design my wife made. I hope the dress manufacturer you mentioned in your letters will like them. Read 
reading this, talking about it is becoming real. We're leaving. I've never lived anywhere else in my life, so Rob. We can't stay anymore. You have the drawings? Uh, yes. There's just one left to finish. What else did you say? Eat. As the current and advertised breadwinner of the family, you must stay strong. Prepare yourself. This is the most difficult part. At least for me. As to my family, I can inform you that we're all well, which is not true. So I must write the truth. All the vendors have lost their appointments and cannot find any work. I am helping my wife in shaping and making artificial leather and silk flowers, which are much in favor here, which sounds desperate and sad, but true. That's all I have so far. It's good so far. But you must ask Alvin a favor. Asking Alvin to arrange visas to, for us to immigrate to America isn't a favor. If I am the breadwinner, there is something I need. Helping a stubborn outward banker and, and write what I say. Pick up your pen, Paul. Could I trouble you to send me a fashion magazine for ladies because we cannot get them now from Paris and are not informed about Paris fashions. The Germans are reading our mail and you want me to ask my American cousin from Milwaukee, Wisconsin to send us fashion magazines. Who cares what they think? It, it, it makes us sound like we're very foolish and innocent people good. I need to see the fashions, Paul, so I know what kind of clothes to make. What if he can't send a Paris magazine? Then he can send an American one. Which is better. Yeah, I have no idea what women in Milwaukee, Wisconsin wear. I don't even know where Milwaukee, Wisconsin is. And now for stupid news? <laughs> I went shopping for Alvin. He was interested in me sending him a series of stamps from the Protectorate of Bohemia and Rabia. <laughs> Do you know that it is now forbidden to send our stamps to America? <laughs> oh, stupid. <laughs> uh, but more important, could you get cigarettes? No, but I got us a wand. Very much. <laughs> but first, I will read what you have written, mm -hmm. so I can practice my English, if we are going to live there. <coughs> Out loud. <laughs> well, you know all this business about magazines, mm -hmm. which you copy perfectly. <laughs> and the stupid news about the stamp. This is nice, Paul. I hope to see hear from you very soon. I remain with high regards to you and your wife with best wishes for the new year. Yours sincerely, Paul. Next year in America for New Year's. 
next year in America for the news. tomorrow? Oh, your drawings. They're wonderful, dear. <laughs> the colors, the design, the silhouette you've created. I think mm, these seven. Well, they are my most popular designs. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I have to remember which woman, woman lives in which neighborhood, wears which designs, so they don't run into each other at the theater or out shopping. I think the women of Milwaukee, Wisconsin, <laughs> We love your clothes, and it is unlikely for them to run into the women of Prague. <laughs> so it's done. I know you said seven, but we need to include a gown. <laughs> we must have a gown, Paul. A beautiful gown has sex appeal and it sells. You are a very good saleswoman, Mrs. Sternard. <laughs> Eight it is. <laughs> I'll finish this one quickly. Thanks to the wine, I'm feeling a little less frightened. <laughs> Thanks to the wine, I have an idea. Do we have a photograph? The one we could send out instead of steps. And to thank him for the fashion magazine. <laughs> oh. Remember this photograph? Oh, look how happy we look. <laughs> <laughs> We're very happy. So, we sent this picture of Hedy and Paul Spernod of Prague, Czechoslovakia to America. It will be waiting for us when we get to wherever Milwaukee, Wisconsin <laughs> is. <laughs> Tomorrow, when I walk you to the shop, we shall put Post this together, and wish for the best. It's 
tomorrow on our walk. Let us look at everything and make memories so we don't forget for our favorite places, the people. You like this place? <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe I've never had to describe it. I'm serious. If we don't remember the people and places we love, then how are we to be remembered? Are we just to disappear? Not a chance of that happening, my unforgettable friend. <laughs> well, that's very romantic. But it's not going to get you out of making posies after dinner. <laughs> Will this? Thank you. 